पानी की हर बूंद की अपनी कहानी है किस बादल से बरस किस पर्वत से निकल किस नदी से लिपट किस धरा से टकरा आपके ग्लास तक आई है आज ये जानना बहुत जरूरी है जिससे सबके ग्लास में पानी बना रहे क्या आपके आसपास भी कोई पानी की कहानी है जुड़िए पानी की कहानी इनिशिएटिव से पानी की कहानी डॉट ओ आर जी ऐसी जुड़े जानकारी के लिए संपर्क फॉर्म जरूर भरें। क्या आप जानते हैं आपके नव प्रवर्तक पोर्टल भारतीय इंजीनियरिंग द्वारा स्वदेश में ही निर्मित एवं संचालित हैं? यानी वर्ड प्रेस इत्यादि जैसे विदेशी फ्रेमवर्क पर किए गए जोड़ तोड़ के काम की तरह ना तो हमारे पोर्टल्स आपको महंगे पड़ते हैं ना हमारे सर्वर को हैक करना आसान है स्वदेशी तकनीक से आप पाए पूरी तरह से एक्सपर्ट्स द्वारा संचालित मोबाइल रेडी वेबसाइट यानी कोई झंझट नहीं सिंपल सालाना प्राइसिंग यानी जेब पर तो हल्का है ही कोई सरप्राइज नहीं और साथ ही पाए आपके पोर्टल से जुड़े डिजिटल विजिटिंग कार्ड डेली मोटिवेशन त्योहार बधाई संदेश और भी काफी कुछ आज ही अपना खुद का मीडिया मजबूत करें आज ही हमें www.navpravartak.com पर या हमारे नंबर 9650022270 पर मैसेज कर अपना खुद का पोर्टल बुक करें लोकल के लिए वोकल बने वर्ग ने मूव ऑन नाउ टू आर फाइनल पैनलिस्ट एंड आई एम प्लीज टू वेरी मच टू वेलकम डॉक्टर वेंकटेश डूटा हु इज एसोसिएट प्रोफेसर एट बाबा साहिब बिबराव ऑन द कार University in Lucknow. Uh, you're very welcome, sir. Thank you, Chair Jason, and all the panelists. I hope I'm audible. Uh, and uh, yes, you are. Let me share my screen. So I'm go <clears throat> going to give you a very brief overview on uh, you know the recycling opportunities that we have in state of Uttar Pradesh and uh, what are the bottlenecks. the uh, social economic and technical bottlenecks or the barriers that could prevent the rapid diffusion of uh, water recycling prospects basically i work on uh, river systems and uh, river restoration and during the past uh, you know couple of years working on different streams and uh, water bodies i realized that there is a huge challenge to restore these water bodies through appropriate innovation and technology and there is also a dialogue which is happening at the policy level on uh, uh, to draft the guidelines for uh, waste water reuse and recycling because just now we finished uh, drafting uh, you know water policy for uttar pradesh which is still at the draft stage and uh, there's a component on uh, uh, waste water management and reuse policy so we are also trying to draft a separate policy on waste water management and reuse and the state government intends to formulate very strict guidelines as you have seen in the first presentation that the national green tribunal is also thinking to penalize those who are not uh, meeting the strict regulatory standards so can i go to the next next slide uh, yes so i call uh, you know uh, the pollution as the biggest market failure and we have the inefficient market or the economy of water and there are many reasons one of the most important reason that was highlighted in the first presentation is the groundwater overdraft we have ignored the groundwater economy you know the groundwater the actual contribution of groundwater in our total gross domestic production is highly ignored we talk about virtual water we talk about water footprint but if you discount the externalities the negative impact that you cause due to overdraft of water pumping more water that can be actually recharged from the rainfall you know we have seen in uh, in in the district where we are located now lucknow the ground water is declining by almost 1 meter every year so if you see the last two decades data the ground water has dropped by 15 to 20 meters aquifers are beginning to compress and collapse and eventually we are going to get zero there are already uh, you know the zero days are coming second 
A component is water pricing. We are still locked in the VCS circle. We do not get enough money to run our STP, sewage treatment plant. Forget about operation and maintenance. We don't even recover the uh, recurring capital cost. And the wastewater is still seen as pollution, not as a resource. You know, water is a, is a water. It's a different kind of water. And in water cycle, we want to use the water, reuse it, and return back to the nature in the same pristine state in which we had abstracted in the first place. Next slide. So we talk about supply management, but there is a demand management, and that demand management calls for shifting away from construction of new dams and reservoirs. And that can be achieved through making water recycling you know, part of your hydrological cycle, part of your uh, you know, supply intervention. And I call it a leaking bucket syndrome, that when your bucket is leaking, you always become a crisis monger. We, we keep on asking for more water, but there are inherent inefficiencies, there are inherent you know, supply side constraints, and we talk about more supply augmentations. Next slide. So, so what are the economic and social barriers? And I call it these barriers have possible solutions. I was very much impressed by the presentation of Balakrishna and Hiralalji. And the common thread in both of the presentations is that the solution is inherent, is all local, and we have to dig further, you know, deeper and convert the barriers into solutions. Making non-potable water useful is the answer. You know, we get uh, water of differentiated quality. There is no uniform quality water. And if you flush the water toilet with the same drinking water quality standard, it's a huge loss of national economy. So when you do this reclamation opportunities, when you develop enough capacity, you have to have the institutional arrangements. You know, like I was, I looked through the model of several, uh, you know, countries like uh, uh, the Australia, European Union, they have water framework directive, then off that office of water uh, at UK. And uh, recycling is coming in a very big way, and we have to adopt recycling, uh, you know, uh, the major recycling for restoration, for ecological restoration, even for, for managed aquifer recharge, but, but drinking water quality, you know, you have to convert wastewater up to drinking water quality standard, then only you can put into the aquifers. Next. So, so this is the, the, the triangle, the technology and innovation triangle. And if you see the base of the pyramid, the base of the pyramid is technology. Technological maturity, we have to invest enough and come out with innovations, come out with low cost solution where you could convert urban water seaways, urban water, you know, the gray water and the black water into non-potable water, at least of some, uh, you know, non-potable applications like gardening and irrigation and, you know, other non-potable uh, uh, resources. And there is a lot of acceptance. I, I did a survey while I was doing my work in Delhi, and there is a demand for non-potable water for toilet flushing, for gardening, and even for irrigation, the lawn and the golf course in the, even in the construction industry, if you go to NCR, uh, there is a huge demand for non-potable water for constructing your uh, settlements, the housing colonies. Next. So, I will not go into detail because time is less and I am the last speaker. So what are the opportunities? Uh, you know, we talk about climate change, we talk about resilience, we talk about adaptation. I think water footprint is the biggest uh, intervention, you know, reducing our water footprint, re reducing our virtual water. And that could contribute to developing resilience in our system. All the smart cities, they will survive not because of GDP or because of money, but because of ecological endowments, because of green and uh, blue landscape. We have seen this pandemic and we have seen the resilience. It is only due to natural capital that cities would survive in future. And we have to invest on closing this loop of water cycle where wastewater is considered as a resource. And there are many decentralized applications. There are many small scale, simple techniques, which Bala was talking about at the household level, at the industry level and even designing a dual supply system, uh, dual reticulation system where you could use the non-potable water for even toilet flushing is coming in a big, big way in some of these smart cities. Next. 
So, so these are some of the non-potable water applications, power plants, industrial applications, irrigation, green belt development. You know, Australia is using all the recycled water for green belt development, even for ecological restoration. They have biofilters and constructed wetlands, and they are also using storm water reuse for uh, for recharging the groundwater. Similarly, we can have recreational lakes, fountains, and decorative ponds, and managed aquifer recharge that is also being talked about to augment uh, the river flows. The you know the uh, all the rivers which are perennial rivers are now becoming intermittent in their summer season. So can we augment? Can we augment the flow river flows during the lean season by treated wastewater? That is also a good option. Next. So. I call it the uh, the components of water restoration that I design for my river work. First of all, you have to enhance the water quality that is clean water. Second, you have to develop the flow regime. There, there has to be enough water in the, in, into the river, into the lakes, and also in the groundwater. Next, uh, next component is, can we go down a little bit? I'm not able to see the slide. Uh, You know, like ecological uh, aesthetics and uh, groundwater recharge, recreation. These are some of the benefits that we can uh, do with the reclaimed water. Cost is very important factor, and the energy cost is where we can intervene with the uh, you know with the uh, innovation. We have to develop also some of the <clears throat> techniques, like we have reverse osmosis and ion exchange, uh, but. At the uh, bigger level, we have to design system which which could you know take care of the newer emerging contaminants like uh, you know smaller plastics or even uh, drugs. Some of the emerging drugs that that is being uh, you know flushed in our sewage system. So can we design low cost solutions which could take care of the you know re, uh, the re, uh, reach, uh, treating the wastewater up to the potable water standards? Next. So these are some of the good references. Australia is, of course, a good example. They have a guidelines for water recycling and reuse. And in Uttar Pradesh water policy, I was also a member of the drafting committee of state water policy. And we are we have included the three components. One is the the urban water supply and wastewater treatment in line with the overall framework of Atal mission for rejuvenation and urban transformation. Like uh, we have Amrit scheme. So we are talking in terms of the overall framework to be inbuilt into this framework, into this scheme, and decentralized treatment. We are also talking about decentralized treatment at the starting from household level to the block level, and even at the colony level. And the wastewater management and reuse policy should be part of the entire water policy. Similarly, Israel is uh, doing the recycling. Almost 90% of wastewater in Israel is, re is reused, of course, for irrigation. California has a state legislature and it aims to increase the recycled water by at least 1.5 million acre feet by the end of this year. So similarly, we can have such targets in uh, which could be developed in our master plans. Some of the master plans uh, are also ingraining the area for uh, reclamation, the wastewater reclamation projects and the, the construction agencies like CPWD and uh, uh, you know, the public uh, construction department, they are also developing standards for using reclaimed water for their construction in this industry. Next. So this is my last slide. This is a picture of Asi Nala in Varanasi on the right hand side. And on the left hand side is a small stream in South India. And that is what we want our rivers and our water bodies to be livable, to be full of water quality, to be quality, I mean, the uh, which is required for nature, the quality which is pristine, which is sacred, and so that we we define the entire water budgeting in the in, in the entire hydrological cycle as water, which is used, reused, and returned back to the nature in a very pristine state. Thank you so much for your time and for your attention. Thank you. Well, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Venkatesh. Um, it was very inspiring to see such a progressive uh, view of water resource um, and policy, um, all the way from you know the reuse across communities and industries. Um, these new technologies on detection that can help uh, improve 
water quality monitoring um, and in the great case studies as well uh, that can be implemented here and elsewhere. Um, thank you so much. Uh, we've now come to the end of the, the speakers and panelists. We're going to take some questions now. Um, Dr. Hiralal unfortunately had to leave. Um, so he welcomes any questions to be sent to Mr. Barat and uh, I'll get back to you personally. Um, maybe Barat, you can help if you see any questions. I'll start with one here for the for Dr. Venkatesh. It looks like um, someone's asking um, your opinion on on the poor. You know, we can have these very robust and progressive policies, um, whether it's water resource or anything on the in the watershed management. Um, but how do we address the issues of poor implementation? Perhaps I could throw that to you first, and then uh, perhaps Mr. Gupta would also like to answer. Uh, yeah, Jason, uh, I can see there is one question from our one, one of our panel uh, delegate is Mr. Avinash Kumar, who wrote, is there any technique to manage salts in uh, wastewater except MEE? So I think anyone can reply as a panelist. Great, thanks. We've got two questions now, so we'll let the panelists jump in. Um, maybe we can start with you, Venkatesh. Yeah, we'll start with uh, Dr. Venkatesh, and then we'll go to you, Mr. Uh, Sanjay. Thank you. Yeah. So I was talking about the poor implementation of policies, acts, and laws. You know, we have very well-drafted uh, code of conduct, but when it comes to implementation, we fail miserably. And that is due to, one, we have multiple institutions and there is a conflicting role assignment, like, you know, like there's no one agency who could be held responsible. And there is also uh, uh, technological bottlenecks, like we have, uh, we define well-planned, uh, you know, guideline, but we do not, we do, not do the local uh, capacity building, the local, uh, you know, research, whether we have this kind of capacity or not. Like we, we may have a policy for wastewater recycling and reuse, but when you go to the STP, sewage treatment plant, they do not get 24 hours power supply. So power supply is intermittent. Similarly, the staff, uh, they are not properly trained. Some of the infrastructures, especially in terms of uh, uh, connecting with the uh, secondary, you know, sea-based network, that is also poor. And sometimes the stormwater drains are being used to carry the black water and the sewage, which is not required, which is very bad in our planning system. So we have to correct all those. And the first uh, starting point would be to reform the water sector by institutional reform, that is uh, the right kind of institution with right kind of trained manpower, like, uh, you know, bureaucrats like Hiralalji and spirited engineers like Balakrishna. So we have to join these dots together and with the right kind of capacity building, right kind of communication network, right kind of social capacity, uh, you know, building, we can make a dent, we can definitely do positive intervention. And I think time is right, and that's why we are going through this policy revision phase. We are also thinking to design the basin level organizations, you know, at the river basin scale, so that the the decisions could be taken at the top down, at the bottom up also, like you know, like uh, at the local level, at the grassroots level, at the block level, at the township level, and ultimately uh, the voice of the local people is heard by the bureaucrats. Yeah, thank you, Jason. Uh, so this uh, second question is: There any technique to manage salt in wastewater except I mean, There are not many, but whatever the few practices, one is the social bond evaporation. But the, the uh, demands of uh, evaporation is that whenever the rainy season is there, then there is a likely chances to solar pond got. Uh, evaporation and uh, the spillover and there also you will not get uh, proper sunlight to, to run these solar ponds. Another is the latest one is uh, the MBRE, Mechanical Recompression. This is the, the latest version of the ME. So where, where the same kind of effluent is again with the whatever the heat available uh, for the first run that again and again reutilized in MBRE so that the thermal efficiency further got enhanced in this. So these are the two, two, two apart from that. Thank you. 
Do you, uh, I see another question here, perhaps for uh, Mr. Gupta as well, um, related to the water audit. And I'll let you comment first. And if the other panelists want to also answer, um, that would be great. Uh, it is often observed that industries and private companies often do not exclusively disclose their water usage and treatment data in the public domain. So if one has to avail the data, where in which department can one go to for the same? Yeah, thank you for this question. Uh, it's true that uh, it's very difficult to uh, collect data from private companies uh, like sugar industry because uh, I personally had once gone to collect some water samples with my students and I faced a lot of difficulties because they claimed that uh, they had, they were a zero waste sugar industry. But uh, the locals complained a lot about pollution of, uh, you know, nearby farms and uh, they, they were releasing some black water uh, from their ATP. So very, uh, you know, with great difficulty, we went inside their premises and we collected some uh, wastewater for our sampling and we found that indeed the ETP was not working properly. So uh, I think these companies, uh, they have uh, the annual reports and they also have their environmental uh, department and uh, they, they publish their reports quite regularly. But some of the industries, they do not do it because they, are, uh, they do not have properly well-maintained ETP so if you do not get the data, what you can do, you can write to their, uh, you know, the, uh, the chairperson or the managing director and you can ask them that you want to visit their, uh, you know, industry one day or, uh, you know, you can talk to their, the in charge, concerned in charge. And if you do not get the data again, then you can contact the local authorities like district magistrate or the block development officer that you are not able to get the data of their treatment because these data should be in the public domain. And uh, and even NGT is coming very strongly on uh, reporting of such you know industries which claim that they are zero waste industry, but actually when you go, you find something different. So this is a very tricky issue. If you go to Kanpur area, some of the industries are so polluted, so polluting to the uh, the local aquifers, the groundwater that we 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 get. Uh, you know, chromium and all sorts of heavy metals. Even though they say that they are connected to CETP, that is combined effluent treatment plant. So this question is very tricky. I don't know. Uh, sometimes you have to work very hard like a uh, activist, you know, or uh, write to the newspaper or contact the district magistrate and so on. Like it's very difficult to get. Uh, I agree that it's very difficult to get data from private industries. Uh, I hope I have answered this question. Yeah, Thank can I so much. can I add on? Thanks. Add on if this time is one minute, I will take on this particular uh, question. So this data can be can we get specifically from two three departments? One is Central Pollution Control Board. Second is for if if they are using the bowl well, then you can see the Central Groundwater Authority, and the third is. This environment compliance report is a publicly available in the public environment for community website. So environment clearance report give, will give you the on the side how water consumption is, what kind of treatment units they have, they have in the industry had, and what is the discharge limits, discharge uh, um, uh, quantity they have to. So this is the one one level uh, information can we get from two, three uh, departments. Thank you. Thank you. Well, thank you very much for that submission. Very helpful. Um, unfortunately, we are out of time. So I would just like to thank very much the keynote speakers, the, all the participants, the panelists, the great questions and discussion that we had. I think it was very fruitful, high quality discussion. Um, and I'm also advised that we are over time on the summit as well. So on behalf of CII um, and all of us and all of the organizers, we'd like to thank all of the participants and speakers and panelists for participating today. It was a very uh, constructive discussion. I think it, it did well to sort of um, describe and articulate the, the, the main challenges uh, facing UP and in India and even somewhat in the world uh, that we're facing with the whole water cycle. Um, but we also saw a lot of solutions and ways forward. And so I think it was a very constructive day. 
Um, the presentations will be sent out along with recordings of all the sessions. If you have follow-up questions, please send them to Mr. Barat. So unless any of the organizers have any uh, final thoughts, um, on behalf of everyone, thank you so much for attending today. Uh, it was a very productive session. Um, have a great day. Thank you so much.